bulldog. Ever since Scarlow and Renius had their hundredth birthday, Peter Sam had been worried. He kept on saying that the real Duke never came. Rubbish, said Duncan. Of course he was real. All the same, Peter Sam persisted, he wasn't our Duke. Our Duke, said Sir Handel, is an engine. You're as bad as he is. All engine Dukes were scrapped. Ask Duck. Duck doesn't know everything, Scarlowy put in quietly. Tell us about him, you two. Here is one of the stories that Peter Sam and Sir Handel told about Grandpuff. It happened when Sir Handel was new to the line. Now, have you remembered that in those days he was called Falcon and painted blue? You have. Now we can begin. The manager came to see him one day and said he was pleased with his work so far. Now, Falcon, he went on, you must learn the mountain road. Yes, please, sir, said Falcon, excited. So tomorrow you shall go double-heading on it with Duke. He'll explain everything. Falcon didn't like this. He thought Duke was a fusspot and a regular old fuddy-duddy. Duke's train was one for holidaymakers. He called it the picnic. Falcon was ready when Duke arrived. Duke drew forward beside him. Listen, he said, the mountain road is difficult. You take the train and I'll couple in front. No, said Falcon, I'll lead. How can I learn the road with you lumbering ahead, blocking the view? Suit yourself, said Duke shortly, but never mind the view. Attend to the track. Look at the track, he puffed again on starting. Never mind the view. Fuss pot, fuss pot, puffed Falcon on starting. Fuddy duddy, fuddy duddy, fuddy duddy. They rattled through the first tunnel, looped round, recrossed the river, and entered the second, climbing all the time. Their speed grew slower and slower. Don't dawdle, don't dawdle, urged Falcon. No, Harry. No, Harry, puffed Duke stolidly. The tunnel was curved and pitch dark. Falcon felt stifled. He wanted to get out. Presently the light grew. Two ribbons of track appeared ahead in the gloom. Watch the track, watch the track, warned Duke. Puss pot, puss pot, scoffed Falcon. The tunnel mouth grew larger and larger, till at last they burst into the sunshine. The line here swung sharply right. It was laid on a ledge cut in the hillside. Below lay the valley up which they had come. Track and buildings looked tiny, like toys. No one quite knows what happened next. Duke said there must have been something on the track, and Falcon hadn't kept a good lookout. Falcon said he was dazzled, so how could he keep a good lookout? Anyway, their coaches had barely cleared the tunnel when Falcon lurched. His front wheels derailed, crunched over sleepers and ballast. He came to rest with one wheel uncomfortably near the edge. Dew could save Falcon. Now he held on grimly with locked wheels and taut couplings. Young idiot, he hissed. Stop it! I can't hold you if you shake. Falcon tried hard to stop shuddering. Quickly, Duke's driver and fireman chucked his wheels and strengthened the coupling between the two engines. Thank you, said Duke. Now I'll manage. With Duke secure, the two crews, helped by a plate layer, propped up Falcon's front end. They were looking forward to a rest when Duke began wheeshing in an alarming way. His fireman ran to his cab. Water, he cried. We want water, quickly. The plate layer's cottage stood nearby. He explained to his wife and the passengers borrowed jugs, buckets, kettles, saucepans, anything, in fact, which would hold water. They formed a chain from the well to the engine and passed them from hand to hand. The fireman, meanwhile, reduced his fire and anxiously watched the gauge. It was hot and tiring work, for Duke needed many gallons. But at last the fireman shouted cheerfully, We're winning! Don't weaken! And they all set to work again with a will. They cheered again when the breakdown gang arrived. They showed other passengers how to help them lever Falcon back to the rails. The manager was at the top station. He said he was sorry about the accident and thanked the passengers for their help. Not at all, they said. We admired the way you put things right and enjoyed the adventure. 
they thanked Duke and his crew for preventing a nasty accident. Your Duke, they said, is a hero. He stood firm like a bulldog and just wouldn't let go. Falcon said thank you, too. I don't know why you bothered after I'd been so rude. Oh, well, replied Duke. You just had a new coat of paint. It would have been a pity if you'd rolled down the mountain and spoilt it. That would never have suited his grace. <laughs>